Nestled amidst the serene landscapes of Wyoming lies a tale of nature's raw power waiting to be told. Yellowstone's tranquil geysers and pristine beauty conceal a tumultuous past. Approximately 640,000 years ago, this peaceful land was the epicenter of a cataclysmic event known as the Lava Creek Super Eruption. This event forever reshaped North America. While today's Yellowstone captivates visitors with its geothermal wonders and its vast wilderness, its geological narrative is a story of three colossal eruptions. However, it's the Lava Creek eruption that arguably stands out the most in this trilogy of geological fury. To grasp its sheer magnitude, one must envision an explosion 2,500 times more potent than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. Earning its title of Mega Colossal, this eruption spewed a staggering 1,000 cubic kilometers of volcanic material, or 239 cubic miles, its ash even finding its way down to the Gulf of Mexico. One of the most enduring remnants of the Lava Creek eruption is the tough layer it released. This layer of consolidated volcanic ash, transitioning from hues of pink to muted greys, paints a vivid narrative of the eruption's scale and reach. Composed predominantly of rhyolite, it speaks of magma so viscous that its explosive release was nothing short of monumental. The eruption's aftermath was marked by layers of ash and the formation of the Yellowstone Caldera, a vast depression measuring approximately 30 by 45 miles or 48 to 72 kilometers wide. This crater-like structure stands as a testament to the eruption's immense power, resulting from the ground's collapse when the magma chamber emptied. Beyond its geological impact, the eruption's ecological footprint was profound. Immediate surroundings were transformed by pyroclastic flows and thick ash deposits. On a global scale, the eruption introduced what might be termed a volcanic winter, with volcanic ash and gases permeating the atmosphere, leading to cooler global temperatures and disrupted ecosystems. Nature, however, is tenacious. In the aftermath of such devastation, the region witnessed the emergence of resurgent domes, a testament to the continued influence of subterranean magma. Rhyolite lava flows signaled Yellowstone's enduring volcanic spirit, reminding us that this region remains geologically active. From the perspective of early humans, this eruption would have reshaped their entire world. As landscapes transformed and resources became scarce, adaptability became their lifeline, a testament to the resilience of life in the face of nature's fury. In the modern era, Yellowstone attracts millions with its beauty, but it also garners the vigilant gaze of scientists. Equipped with cutting-edge technology, they monitor the region's every tremor and geyser eruption, ensuring we're prepared for any potential future geological events. As we reflect on the Lava Creek eruption, we're reminded of our planet's dynamic nature and the tales embedded within its very fabric. Such events emphasize the delicate balance of nature and the awe-inspiring, often humbling narratives waiting to be discovered. Our exploration of Earth's chronicles is far from over, and as always, there are more stories waiting just beneath the surface. Thanks for watching. Nestled in the heart of North America, stretching across Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, Yellowstone National Park is more than just a haven for wildlife and nature enthusiasts. It's a living testament to Earth's tumultuous geological past and the resilience of nature. But beyond its scenic beauty and geothermal wonders, there's a deeper narrative, one that intertwines cataclysmic eruptions, hidden mineral treasures, and the enduring spirit of preservation. Long before it became a cherished national park, the Yellowstone region was a hotspot of geological activity. Beneath its serene landscapes, the Yellowstone hotspot, fueled by a molten plume of magma rising from deep within the Earth's mantle, was silently brewing. As the North American plate drifted over this hotspot, magma chambers swelled, setting the stage for numerous eruptions that would reshape the continent. Around 2.1 million years ago, the ground beneath Yellowstone led to the Huckleberry Ridge eruption. This wasn't a short-lived spectacle, but a multi-phase event that spanned decades or more. Out of the three recent eruptions unleashed here, this eruption was the most powerful. It released more than double the amount of material than the supervolcanic eruption that we covered in yesterday's video when we looked at Yellowstone's most recent super eruption. Link to that in the description. In today's video, we'll take a look at Yellowstone's Huckleberry Ridge super eruption.
It's often said that Yellowstone has had three supervolcanic eruptions. This isn't true, only two have taken place here. Instead, the truth is that three caldera forming eruptions have taken place here. Yesterday we covered the super eruption that released 1000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles of volcanic material. Today's super eruption released more than double that. In the middle of the two though, another small eruption was strong enough to produce a caldera known as the Mesa Falls eruption. It only released an estimated 280 cubic kilometers or 67 cubic miles worth of tephra. If this went off today, we'd notice its effects in places far and wide. But the word only is used sparingly here, as this is powerful enough to affect the climate of the entire planet. If this went off today, we'd notice its effects in places far and wide. But back to the big one. The initial outburst unleashed pyroclastic flows that scorched vast territories. As the eruption evolved, the Huckleberry Ridge Tephra, a vast expanse of volcanic ash and debris, was propelled into the stratosphere, eventually settling over a significant portion of what is now the United States. This ash layer, still evident in geological formations, is a silent reminder of the eruption's magnitude. The climax of this volcanic event birthed the original Yellowstone Caldera, a depression that captures the essence of the park's volatile past. This occurred when the magma chamber became unstable after much of it was released during the eruption, leading to a significant collapse as the earth above filled the void. In the immediate aftermath, the region resembled an alien landscape, with an entirely new topography. But nature, in its timeless way, embarked on a journey of healing and transformation. The nutrient-rich volcanic soil breathed life back into the land, paving the way for the thriving ecosystems we witness today. In the present day, it's challenging to work out the shape and size of the original caldera as it's been changed by subsequent eruptions. But geologists have painstakingly worked to map the area out, and we have a pretty clear picture today. The caldera from this eruption is referred to as the Island Park Caldera. 2,450 cubic kilometers or 590 cubic miles of material is thought to have been unleashed during this event, making it one of the largest known eruptions in the Yellowstone hotspot's history. The volcanic winter would have been a harrowing event to have lived through, lasting for years to decades in length, due to just how much solar reflecting aerosols were pumped into the stratosphere by the ash plume, only for it to be spread planet wide by the trade winds. But Yellowstone's story isn't just about its volcanic roots. The park is a treasure trove of minerals. From the rhyolite and obsidian formations that hint at its fiery past, to the geothermal display of sulfur-laden fumaroles and the cascading travertine terraces of mammoth hot springs, Yellowstone is a geologist's dream. Recognizing the region's unparalleled geological and ecological significance, the US government in a visionary move in 1872 declared Yellowstone a national park, and it was the first of its kind planet-wide. Now this wasn't merely a nod to its beauty, but a commitment to protect the peace of the Earth's dynamic history. With this designation, pursuits like mining, which once eyed the park's mineral wealth, were halted, ensuring that Yellowstone's legacy remained undisturbed. I personally am against this. I mean, this park's gonna blow up one day. You might as well get what riches you get now, but it is what it is. Today, as visitors wander through Yellowstone with its predictable geysers and diverse habitats, they're walking through pages of Earth's geological diary. The park stands as a symbol of nature's might, its ability to rejuvenate, and our collective responsibility to preserve its wonders. So the next time you find yourself marveling at Yellowstone's beauty, remember you're witnessing a tale of volcanic fury, nature's resilience, and a commitment to conservation that spans generations. Thanks for watching. The roads around the Yellowstone National Park are somewhat unsurprisingly melting. I say unsurprisingly because at this site, underneath the ground, lies a batholithic magma chamber that's released wave after wave of supervolcanic scale eruptions, with some of the largest volcanic eruptions ever released on Earth being associated with this magmatic hotspot. And yep, as a result of the many effects that this magma chamber has on the surrounding land, one of them is a melting of the roads. And that's what this video is all about. The hotspot responsible for the Yellowstone supervolcano had originally been located underneath the Pacific Ocean. But as the North American tectonic plate drifted further and further west, it eventually passed over this magmatic hotspot, 
sparking a wave of supervolcanic eruptions that would consist of dozens upon dozens of calderas existing in present day, dotted from the southwest and slowly moving all the way to where the Yellowstone hotspot is located in present day. It would reshape the land dramatically each time these supervolcano eruption events occurred, leaving behind massive calderas in present day. These supervolcanic eruptions were so frequent they overlap each other, making the ability to count them all almost impossible because there are so many that have taken place. The most recent and youngest supervolcanic eruption is the one that is underneath Yellowstone National Park in present day, and this is where our story begins. As most people know, Yellowstone has a remarkable amount of hydrothermal activity that is taking place in present day. Water that was released by past rains slowly seeps into the ground until it reaches the bedrock underlying Yellowstone, where it then becomes superheated by Yellowstone's batholithic magma chamber. When this happens, the hot water rises back to the surface, unimpeded due to the open plumbing system that exists here, with the highly fractured ground allowing vast amounts of water to circulate around, due to the shattered nature of it from past supervolcanic eruptions that occurred here. Convection currents circulate the hot water so it never gets hot enough to flash to steam and to trigger a phreatic volcanic eruption. But what does this have to do with the roads at Yellowstone? Well, everything. Yellowstone's land is basically the worst place on Earth to lay asphalt. Let me be clear and just firstly state that the roads melting has nothing to do with Yellowstone supposedly erupting soon. This isn't some doomsday sign, it's just a reality of the land here. Much like shifting land and earthquakes are in other countries. The phenomenon occurring here is called asphalt deflection, and it's been known to occur here for decades. It basically means the ground here rejects asphalt. The abundant hydrothermal activity makes the surrounding ground pretty damn hot, and laying asphalt directly onto a hot surface like this is a recipe for damage to occur, especially during summer, when the thin strip of asphalt that is the road would essentially be baked from beneath by the hydrothermal water and from above by the hot sun, turning it into a semi-fluidic, rubbery consistency. If the road heats up substantially, the asphalt loses its solid consistency and actually begins to flow more like silly putty. This can lead to it sticking onto car tyres, and the road itself twists, warps and loses shape. Potholes form along with ripples and the road becomes unusable whilst hot. So if you're thinking of going to Yellowstone, maybe go there in the winter months, unless you want a memento from your visit there to be in the form of asphalt laden tyres.